driving away. Hey, you got to do those <clears throat> the 15 minutes a day. Gotcha. Some people say, you know, you got to shower every morning. Uh, mm -hmm. But yes. uh, if you're going to play. Keep up your routine. Oh, yeah. yes. Becomes right. part of your lifestyle. It's a bit like Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. You do it, uh, but uh, we're, we're, we're casting off too soon. I think I should uh, introduce what we're doing first yes. once again. Mm -hmm. Here I am in Cafe Zola mm -hmm. reading uh, columns that I wrote for the African Times newspaper from 1996 to 1999. Mm -hmm. The publisher, of course, was a man named Charles Ann Chan. Uh, and all I can say is what I've said once before is that I was given the absolute freedom to write about almost anything I wanted to write about. Some of what I wrote about was just simply absurd. Mm -hmm. Some of it was important. <laughs> Some of it, I think, was yeah. important. Some of it was just simply yeah, what I was feeling at the moment. And being a creature of impulse, I was actually able to clue in on my impulses and do what I'm about to read now. Hello. Hello. Oh, and God, you're thank Odie Hawkins. For espresso. Yes, Odie Hawkins, underground master. Did I mention my name? I, I'm, 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 you know what? I'm so, so caught up in the moment, I know. Right, I'm, but I'm so conscious these days of... Uh, narcissists and malignant narcissists especially that uh, I'm almost reluctant to start off with the first person you know I I, I we get enough of that but I did write these columns so <laughs> I am going to read these columns gotcha the first one uh, this date from this is a bi-weekly issue every other week, that is to say. And uh, I'm calling this one Musings on a Unique Exhibition of Media Portrayal of Blacks. This is something that actually happened. Mm -hmm. There are several ways to approach the African American Museum, 600 State Drive Exposition Park, Los Angeles. Dice between Exposition Boulevard and Figueroa Street. Years ago, I formed the habit of meandering through the Exposition Park Rose Garden on my way to the museum, especially in the springtime. This is a fantastic, incredible thing. There's a whole garden of different kinds of roses. The Rose Garden is parallel to Exposition Boulevard and must be considered one of the most beautiful gardens in the world. Roses of every color, aroma, size, and shape are planted there, and unbelievably, it is open to an adoring public daily. On my way to the current exhibitions at the African American Museum, I was enchanted by the sight of a diminutive pair of Guatemalan parents. I asked, Guatemalan parents, I asked gently lifting their two small children from rose to rose mm -hmm. to snip mm -hmm. to sniff at the flowers like human hummingbirds. <laughs> it's a sight I'll never forget in all my life. Mm -hmm. The kids are Ah Papa is bueno. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Inside the museum. On display in the main gallery is the world, the world work of Noah Purifoy, who along with the inimitable John Otterbridge can sing songs with metal and add dimensions to your understanding of the power of pound materials. I heard the sibilant whispers of these artists in my ears as I wandered through Noah Purifoy's forest art. David Bates, Mary Norman de Pillars, Margaret Burroughs, Charles Burroughs, Jeanette Glover, Tabula, the dancer, Iolosha Tanina Shangobumi, Ashe, Oshalashe Adilabu, Cedric Adams, Henrique Cristobal Garcia Donacimento, Abgeus Donacimento, 
DJ Robinson, Willie Middlebrook, Simon Rodia, George Middlebrook, Armando Parazzi, Richard Wright, Tony Love, Osmane Simbani, Barnett Honeywood, Margaret Garcia, Yarena Cervantes, David Hammonds, Ryua Akinchigon, Charles Dixon, Darlene Dixon. <laughs> God, so many people. Cecil Ferguson, Kunte, Miriam Ferguson, Alma Lopez, Diego Rivera, Clemente Orozco, Siqueiros, Nona Olavisi, Amdi, Otis, Richard. I'm giving a shout out to artists that I've known over a period of time who were being given a chance to show their stuff at this museum. So if it seems like I'm just going on and on about names, I am. The Watch Prophets, Gigi in Accra, Mongo Santa Maria, Moshe Melan, Julito Collazo, Carlos Potato Valdez, Celia Cruz, Jeffrey Gaddy, Tony Cox, Nancy Cox, Greg Pitts, Sandra Sharp, Baba Tunde, Ola Tunje, Baba Tunje, Ola Tunji, Charles White, Cynthia St. James, Mel, Greg Edwards, Intostaki Shange, Felipe, Veronica Red, Helen Martin, Horace Sapscott, Robin Braxton, Nick Clatour, Fela and John Otterbridge, just to name a few. These artists and others, especially Otterbridge, have been my mentors, the ones who've made me understand that the artist's canvas doesn't necessarily have to be stretched on a wooden frame. Noah Purifoy's works are marvelous examples of how far the envelope can be pushed. Henry Adams' photographs of another time frame in Los Angeles are in another gallery. Some of the photographs are unmounted. They rest on cocktail tables next to the sofa and on a sidebar, inviting the visitor to look at the photos as though he or she were looking at family photos at home. Several of the photos are worth making the trip from wherever you have to come from. A classic study of Nellie Lutcher, Donna Washington, Earl Bostick, and Jimmy Witherspoon having fun on somebody's stage, actually seen on the stage. Mm. A blown up study of Louis Armstrong looking so dapper and suave as to be too cool. Too cool. A young Yvonne Braithwaite Burke delicately, delicately posed and beatifically smiling in the middle of a group of characters who look like pirates. <laughs> She was always so innocent looking, but she was a great politician. Once again, I wonder aloud, how could such a gorgeous and intelligent woman become a politician? In the next gallery, there are points, prints, and extremely literate essays explaining these excerpts from ancient copies of Harper's Magazine and other publications. The exhibit concerns images of African Americans dating to pre-reconstruction times. Mm. Get that? Pre-reconstruction times. I wish they had gone back beyond that into our times before we became pre-reconstruction subjects. But that's my own feeling. It deals with visual stereotyping, racist, des racist designations that Africans in America have always been forced to deal with. The truth is never offered a level playing field in any of these gruesome misrepresentations. For example, as a way to slander Africans who obviously wanted to do more and be more than slaves. 
a couple has returned from a European holiday with turned up noses, umbrellas, and fine clothes back to the plantation. Yes, the plantation. Some of the propaganda is so absurd it mimics being clever, but it's always dangerous. There's a put down implied by the cartoon that shows black women using brand X to wash white people's clothes. That's a commercial. The unappreciated laborers are endorsing more than soap. They are endorsing a way of life. They're still around. Some of them are endorsing 45. What kind of soap suds do they watch him with? Eh, and there's more, much more. Go and see for yourself. Finally, despite the fact that the museum is closed on Mondays, open Tuesday from Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., the executive director, Jamasina E. Henderson, gave Media Watch access to the space. For information about exhibitions, call 213-744-7513. And don't forget to smell the roses before and after you've seen the exhibits. So that was happening there mm -hmm. with that place. That was in when you, uh, 1997? I'm sorry. That was I missed your question because yeah. you were speaking so low and so melodiously. Okay, the article was, that article you just read was written when? The article was written way back when. In April of 1997. Thank you very much. I want to use that pause to get yes. pregnant pause. That attention to what I'm going to say. Okay. This one comes from April 15th to April 3rd. That was a time span. He went from 1 15 to 15 by, by the end of the month, whatever mm -hmm. it was. This one is called the way immigrant African women have fared in the U.S. media. I was quite taken by something I noticed one day, one evening. Uh, we've seen a lot of black men from Africa uh, given a place on American television, American media, news, and so forth. The only one that I can point at presently, the only female I can point at presently who comes from Africa is Joy Reid. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe she's American born, but her father came from the Congo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started wondering why, other than on the English broadcast, the BBC and all that, why is it that we don't see more women from Africa doing news broadcasts in the United States. So I wrote an article about it. The article is called, the column is called The Place of African Women in the American Media. A brief look at the images of African women in the African American media was inspired by the observations of a visiting Ghanaian news anchor woman named Nanaya Grace Apia. I have been in uh, in Los Angeles for six weeks now, and I have not seen one African woman in the media. Where are they? No, oh, there are a number of African American women on television. Several news programs feature African American women. I'm not talking about African American women. I'm speaking of African women. We seem to be invisible. Media Watch, that was me took up the challenge to determine how true this assertion was. Zero time was spent seeking images of African women in the so-called mainstream media. We already have a fix on their patterns. Our focus was on the African American print and visual media. The subcurrent vibe was to determine in this expanded age of pan-African awareness what African Americans and others were seeing and hearing about women in Africa. It took less than a month to determine that there are no African women 
being prominently featured in the African American media. Mind you, this is 1997. So, it appears that Nana is correct. This is not to suggest that African men are being given overwhelming attention either. However, it does seem that the activities of Mobutu and his rival, Kabila, are relatively well known. Secretary General of the UN, Kofi Annan of Ghana, is known. His comments notice. President Rawlins of Ghana is quoted, but not his wife, Nana Konandu Ajiman Rawlins. And of course, President Nelson Mandela is given his props. Winnie Mandela, who was once iconicized in the African American media, is given much less attention since her divorce from Nelson Mandela. It would appear that male chauvinism operates at a peak level in the African American media. Even when Zarian refugees are being interviewed, it is inevitably male opinions that prevail. It affect African women, as perceived by the African American media, are invisible. There should be no doubt in anyone's mind that African women are playing extremely important roles in Africa's struggle against neo-colonialism to create those conditions that will offer their children a better world in which to live. As we all know, they have been making that effort since the days of Cleopatra and Queen Njinga. African women, y'all. Clearly, in the interest of receiving a more well-rounded perspective on events in Africa, the ideas, attitudes, and viewpoints of the women of Africa should be given wider coverage. Uh, interesting thing happened as a result of this. Several African-American women contacted me and asked me in polite terms, what are you talking about? <laughs> I thought I had explained it pretty well in, in the article, mm -hmm. but uh, we talked about it, and mm -hmm. it was left at that. I wanted to say to them that people like Caddy Kay from the BBC, uh, an English woman, might be given some, some time on one of our cable stations, uh, some other white women from other places. I'm thinking about a French woman who was very much in uh, the MSNBC news channels for a while when they were talking about things that concerned France. And of course she was over this French. French. <laughs> French. Uh, but I've seldom heard African women even now in 20... 19 asked anything about African affairs and when they are the 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 questions that they ask are usually so silly that these women are offended and just simply say well yeah. having said all that I'm going to leave our uh, columns to rest for a day because I have to get on to this other work that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And all I can say is once again, I'm so pleased and so proud and happy to be invited to play my bongos and to have the support of Zola. <laughs> and we Zola's definitely cafe. enjoy your company, Cody Hawkins. Your website is www.odiehawkins.com. Mm -hmm. Your books can be found on at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Archway, Book Baby, and the person can go into their local bookstore and say they would like to order a book by O D O D I E Hawkins. And uh, enough said. Oh, you, you know enjoy everything. Your you know everything. I know you know everything. Get in the angle, say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Peace.